space, the final frontier. It has always been speculated that there is adventure and even life beyond our planet. With so many possibilities for advancements, it is truly fascinating whenever anything is discovered. You never know what small finding will lead to something big, and what big findings will be revolutionary. So today, here at Unexplained Mysteries, we will be taking a look at recent space discoveries. Earth and other planets seeded with life Scientists around the world dedicate years of their lives in search for answers to life's biggest questions. This is no different for two astrophysicists from Harvard, who have proposed a theory on how life might have spread throughout the cosmos. Though the theory has initially been viewed with skepticism, Amir Siraj and Avi Loeb claim their theory should be taken seriously, and if anything, is too conservative when it comes to calculating how many times life-exporting events from Earth have actually occurred. So, the theory is, back when the solar system was more packed millions or billions of years ago, a gigantic comet came close to the outer reaches of our atmosphere. It was swiftly moving, several miles above the Earth's surface, too high to burn up as a fireball, but low enough that the atmosphere slowed it down. Exceptionally robust microbes were drifting up in its path, and some of those microbes survived the impact of the comet. These microbes ended up concealed deep within the comet's porous exterior, shielded from the radiation of deep space as the comet soared away from Earth and finally out of the solar system entirely. Thousands and millions of years went by before the comet ended up in another solar system with habitable planets. Finally, the comet collided into one of those planets, deposited the microbes, with many of them still living, and set up a new position for earthly life in the cosmos. Whether or not this actually happened is unknown, as there's no solid evidence that proves it. However, the pair of astrophysicists at Harvard claim that the depositing of microbes into a comet, which is then ejected from the solar system, should have happened. And not just once, but a few dozen times throughout the Earth's history. While the theory has been met with skepticism, there's actually good reason to suggest it's possible. In the 1970s, tests were carried out using a series of small rockets, which identified colonies of bacteria in the upper atmosphere. Comets do enter and leave our solar system now and again. A large comet could have grazed the Earth, and while comets are porous, it may have protected the microbes from radiation. Some microbes can also survive for surprisingly long periods in space. Siraj and Loeb suggested this happened multiple times, which may have caused other planets to be seeded with living microbes. One popular theory as to how life started on Earth also involves life being brought here on a comet which crashed into the Earth, kickstarting life as we know it. So our planet may have been seeded, or may have caused others in turn to be seeded. Samples from asteroid Roigu are the most primitive material we've found. Asteroids can sound really frightening. After all, we know what happened to the dinosaurs. However, they hold plenty of valuable research material. One asteroid, a carbon-filled near-Earth asteroid 162173 Roigu, seems to contain the most primitive material within our solar system. Tests at two different laboratories have confirmed. Deborah Domingue from the Planetary Science Institute explained that the asteroid contains hydrated materials and signs of organics from early on in the formation of the solar system. Collecting this sample from Roigu without analyzing it at all is a huge milestone in itself. Scientists have long thought that studying remains from an asteroid would be more than useful. Though falling through the Earth's atmosphere destroys a lot of meteoric material, and when we do get meteorites land, they are often too damaged and scorched to conduct research from. Therefore, collecting samples becomes much more difficult. Scientists need to find a way to bring samples down to Earth from up in space. So far, samples from the Moon, Comet 81P or WILD-2, and asteroid 25143 Itakawa have all been obtained that way, and now Roigu-2. Hayabusa Mission 1 somewhat failed delivering less than a milligram of dust from Itakawa. 
but Hayabusa 2 returned an impressive 5.4 gram sample from Roigu. Most of the results found from analyzing the data confirmed what was already thought, though some of the material's properties were somewhat surprising. The sample proved to be incredibly porous, with an average bulk density far lower than any meteorite found on Earth. Researchers say that this makes sense as to why we do not see much meteoric material make it to Earth, since porous materials would not survive falling through the atmosphere. This asteroid is incredibly primitive, and researchers hope these samples will change the way we view planet formation to be a little more accurate. With more samples ready to be collected, hopefully more results will continue to confirm what we think we know. A giant black hole keeps evading detection in ABEL 2261. Black holes are not known for their ability to be photographed. In fact, when it happened for the first time, it was a big deal. Because of their vacuous nature, scientists tend to use the effects black holes have on their environment in order to pinpoint them. And after decades of black hole study, you would think we would be pretty good at spotting where they are by now. But there is one specific black hole, a giant one, that keeps giving scientists the slip. It is believed that a supermassive black hole exists at the center of most galaxies, if not all of them. And yet, in a galaxy in the space cluster known as Abel 2261, roughly 2.7 billion light years away, we do not have concrete evidence of one. According to what we already know about black hole behavior, there should be a gigantic black hole at the center of Abel 2261 so big that it would weigh anywhere between 3 billion to 10 billion suns, according to the galaxy's overall mass. Researchers have used a variety of methods to try and capture the black hole and any evidence of its existence. Prior efforts involved using X-rays, specifically looking for any that came from the galaxy's center. This is because X-rays can be used to show black hole behavior, as X-rays are a side effect of the matter that enters the black hole and speeds up tremendously. This results in a lot of X-ray energy. Newer studies also did not find anything. Using better tech that searched deeper into the Abel cluster, the more recent effort looked elsewhere, not just in the galaxy's center on the chance that the black hole had been knocked elsewhere because of a galactic merger. When huge objects collide with black holes, they send off gravitational waves out into space. If the waves are not symmetrical, they can potentially change the black hole's course of direction. Scientists posited that this might be the reason they were unable to find the supermassive black hole. These types of events are currently only hypothetical. NASA officials said the following on the matter. It is not known whether supermassive black holes even get close enough to each other to produce gravitational waves and merge. So far, astronomers have only verified the mergers of much smaller black holes. The detection of recoiling supermassive black holes would embolden scientists using and developing observatories to look for gravitational waves from merging supermassive black holes, they added. Abel 2261 might be one of the best places to search for one of these events, as it shows a number of signs that it underwent a huge galactic merger at some point. The Hubble Space Telescope and Subaru Telescope have each shown that at Abel 2261's core, there is a much greater star density than would be expected of a galaxy of Abel's size. NASA officials said that the distance between the galaxy's center and the densest pack of stars was strikingly distant. Unfortunately, only time will tell if we are able to find the missing black hole. We may live in a massive cosmic void. In 2013, the University of Wisconsin-Madison's astronomer Amy Barger and her student Ryan Keegan made an interesting discovery. They found that the density of our nearby universe is lower than that of other parts. The density of the universe is largely uniform. However, if you break the universe up into smaller parts, it begins to look a lot like a block of Swiss cheese. These smaller parts have certain sections that are very densely packed and others that are more sparsely populated. Research suggests that Earth sits squarely in one of these barer sections, hence the suggestion that if the universe is a big block of Swiss cheese, Earth sits in one of its holes. In fact, one of Amy Barger's students, Ben Hoshite, 
presented new research at a meeting of the American Astronomical Society. Hoshite looked at disparities in measures of the Hubble constant, the number we use to describe the rate at which the universe is growing. Since it describes the condition of our universe, Hubble's constant is expected to stay the same throughout the universe. However, Hoshite found an important difference. To get a local measurement, he found Hubble's constant by analyzing the movement of relatively close type 1a supernovas. To get a cosmic measurement, he used cosmic microwave background radiation, leftovers from the Big Bang. Hoshite believes that the massive void theory, also known as the Swiss cheese theory, may be to blame for the disparity in Hubble's constant, saying the constant is higher using the supernova method. This is in accordance with how we would expect a void to affect the Hubble constant. Gravity from higher density areas is pulling things out of the void at a faster rate than we would otherwise expect. Surprisingly, the astronomical research community seems to be in agreement on the massive void theory. Researchers believe that this particular void is seven times bigger than any other void they have ever measured, and our galaxy is a few hundred million light-years away from the void's center. Surely, such findings serve to remind us once again how minuscule we are in the context of the universe. Even so, this relatively new theory brings us a step closer to understanding how our universe is built, structured, and designed, and it may help us solve other mysteries in the future. But what do you make of these recent discoveries? Be sure to let us know your thoughts in the comment section below and help us grow this community while working to solve these unexplained mysteries. Thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe for more videos.